Hey guys, Shalana here. Welcome to the Bin Zone. On today's video, we're talking about the movie Queen and Slim. And there's a lot to unpack here because this movie has a powerful message, but maybe doesn't deliver it as it should. So let's just dive into the movie in the nick and crannies. The ending, the plot, the themes, the characters, to get a better understanding of this overall message of this movie. And let's start off with the dynamic of the two main characters. Queen and Slim essentially is the story of a first date gone horribly wrong. You have these two characters, we're gonna call them Queen and Slim. They go on a Tinder date, the date was terrible, and on their way home, they get pulled over by a cop. And in self-defense, they kill the cop, and now they're on the run, and that inspires the entire black community of the nation, or at least the Midwest, to unite or rally behind their cause. Now, this is very important because this is a reflection of our modern society when it comes to police brutality and police killings. Because in the beginning of the movie, the police officer was a dick. He was an asshole to Queen and to Slim. And the fact that he had a history of killing black people like they said in the movie kind of adds to the fact that they want to portray him as the evil white guy police officer, which I have no problems with. That's the character he is. But when it comes to the reactions and the retaliations of the two characters, it seems to me that it portrayed Queen as more of the angry black woman in this sense because she's a lawyer and she's within the system. She understands how crooked the system is and it angers her that this guy is exceeding his authority. And then you have Slim who is just a regular dude and he's being very obedient to the cop and doesn't want to get killed because he understands the volatility of his situation and it can only go worse from there. So once they kill him and they run off, the story takes a to the story takes us through the journey of their characters and their evolution. But before that happens, we have this interesting dynamic between the two characters where Queen and Slim are always bickering at, at odds with each other. We have this dynamic between the two characters from the way they talk, the way they're always bickering with each other. It simulates visual poetry. However, it doesn't show a relationship that is very sustainable. And it kind of depicts a broken black unity of family household, if you will, because you have the angry black woman and you have the essentially black regular dude who isn't living up to par because Queen is a lawyer and she's out here doing all these things and understands the system and is fairly successful. And then you have Slim who really isn't and it's kind of shifting the dynamic of their relationship where the power or the power structures actually are in Queen's hand because she's the one who tells him to run away. She's the one who tells him to go to New Orleans. She's the one who tells him to take the other cop out because they do end up running into another cop and they take him out and put him in the trunk. So she's actually guiding him and he's just along for the ride, even to the point where she teaches him or tells him how to go into a gas station and rob the gas station. And even when he does that, he kind of hands the gun over to a white dude. So the power structures and dynamics is shifted more towards a stronger female lead, even though she's being portrayed more so as angry and volatile. But that's understandable from her perspective because once we get an understanding of her background, it kind of gives some justifications as to why she's angry. Like the situation with her mother, the situation with her uncle, and then the fact that she works within the legal system and she understands how it is to fight the system and how hopeless it is. It gives us a look into her mind. Like why would she allow Slim to turn himself in when she knows that it's death for the both of them because she works within the legal system and she knows that they're not going to get a fair shake and add that to the fact that they caused an uprising which brings us to a greater discussion about the self and the black identity and in this country the black identity and the black self is something that the black community has been trying to find ever since we were brought over on slave ships and that's because this culture that we had to foster in isn't a culture that is especially kind to black people and we're kind of oppressed systematically. So therefore, when something like this happens, the entirety of the black community rallies around these characters and holds them up as heroes because they kind of took a stand against the corrupt police system and they fought back. And therefore, every character they meet along the way fits some sort of stereotypical black character or caricature and it's usually a black male because most of the characters that they run into are black males who have speaking dialogues so when they run into the first guy you see the typical black dude with a son who has like a strenuous relationship who calls his wife out of her name and calls the son out of his name but he pushes that aside to show his solidarity with them and understands that they need to 
go about their way and they can't help him even though they hit him with a car so even though he fits into a black stereotype he kind of rides for them and then the next stop is her uncle who's a pimp and he deals with pimping other women out and he even has a black trans woman as a part of his harem and in that scenario he comes off as the black pimp who's pimping out or exploiting other black women and he is able to step aside and show them help as well and then they get to a mechanic once their car breaks down and that mechanic shows that he does not agree with them he's kind of representative of the black republican he doesn't agree with them on a moral standpoint however he's willing to take their money and fix their car even though he's not riding with their cause and then his son who becomes enamored with what they're doing is sort of like the spark of the revolution of the next generation to fight against the system however with this character the son it takes the character on a weird path that makes it kind of unnecessary if you will because the son goes on and participates in this right and ends up shooting a cop and getting killed himself as though queen and slim created this rebellion within black youth to do something that they're not supposed to when their messaging is not necessarily about the black right or the black cause queen and slim did what they did to the cop out of self-preservation because as people and as human beings our number one priority is self-preservation so they killed that cop in order to preserve themselves however that messaging is taken and flipped to be this greater message when that could be a reflection of our society, a lot of these incidents happening with police aren't something that the people who are involved in them aren't trying to be martyrs. Like Michael Brown, it wasn't trying to be a martyr. Philander Castile, Sandra Bland, none of these people were actually trying to be martyrs or start a cause. They were just unjustly killed by cops. And we as the black community looking to rally around something greater than ourselves or greater black identity rallies to their cause. And that move in this movie kind of takes that and exemplifies that and what's really funny is towards the end of the movie you see another black cop who represents the black cop working within the system and he lets them pass by so all these black males that we're seeing are different caricatures and one of the more organic and enjoyable scenes is when they do go to the juke house or the the nightclub whatever you want to call it and the drink is on the house and they're able to dance and have a good time and the people know who they are because these women understand their plight and it's always throughout history of the black community that it's the women that keep their secrets and help them out there was no hoorah spectacular about the nightclub scene it was just the black women holding it down like they've always done and let them go so it's kind of a duality of the two characters you have the black males who have actual speaking roles more speaking roles than the black women but it's the black women actually doing more to help them just by not saying anything and letting them rock as opposed to imparting their own sort of caricature like what was the word i'm looking for opinions on what queen and slim are doing which i found kind of interesting but then towards the end they were helped out by a white couple who helped them escape the law right compared to that with the guy who sells them out at the end for the reward money it shows us that there are white allies and they're willing to jeopardize their own lives for us. But at the same time, it shows us that it's people in the black community that will sell you out. This messaging was kind of weird to me because it could be interpreted two different ways. It'd be your own skin folk that aren't kin folk and you can't trust your own black neighbor. But at the same time, it could also show the disparity in resources or money or life. For example, this character who sells them out, right? He understands their cause. He understands what they're fighting for. But at the same time, this dude has bills to pay. He lives in a trailer. His house is blah. His car is uh, And his grills and beers, like, it's all unkept and he needs money. So let's say he helps Queen and Slim get on the plane and go to Cuba, right? What's in it for him? He goes back to his life of squalor and he's in his shitty trailer and life sucks, right? Or he turns them in and he gets the reward money. Now, it's a lose-lose situation on either end for him because he helps them get away. His life still sucks and they're martyrs, they're heroes, they're in Cuba. And then he goes back to his life of squalor and trash, right? But then he sells them out, gets the money, but then now he's a sellout who abandoned the social self of the black community in America in order for personal gain. But at the same time, is he not justified 
and trying to advance himself. Like I said in the beginning of the video, self-preservation is the number one drive in humans and in most of animals too. The ability to preserve your life and to help yourself grow in life, it's something that we all have innate within ourselves. But at the same time, when you come from a disenfranchised life and the system is against you and this is the type of life, this is your lot in life. Like if he doesn't sell them out, this is his life. He's going to stay in that trailer, probably die in that trailer and end of story. His life amounted to nothing because he decided to help the black cause, right? As opposed to helping his own family and lifting himself out of poverty. So it goes to show that, damn, you really can't trust your own neighbors. But at the same time, are they really to blame? That's a question I pose to you guys because I'm not going to try to answer this in this video because I could see both sides and both sides have valid arguments. And at the same time though, at the end of the movie, when I said self-preservation was the key, right? There's one thing that supersedes self-preservation and that's love. The love a mother has for a child, the love a father has for their child, the love that animals have for their offspring, you are willing to put yourself in harm's way for love. Love is greater than self-preservation. And at the end of the movie, Queen and Slim were in love. They went, we saw the character journey from people who hated each other or did not like each other strongly to, to two people who were madly in love. And at the end of the movie, when they shoot Queen, Slim has the chance to just lay down and get arrested, right? But his love did not want him. His legacy was her. So now that they shot his legacy, he has nothing to live for. He's foregone his he foregoed his self-preservation for his love for her and he wanted to die now that she was dead, which I found to be the crucial message of this movie, and that's love. All of this is because of love. The two characters went on a date looking for love, didn't find it, and now they found it with each other and they end up dying. So love trumps self-preservation. The identity of the black self should be wrapped around love. That's the messaging, my overall message of this. That's the overall messaging I got from this movie. But I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. If you like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. And until next time, binge on.